have to save me, please. First in line, bud. Got your place all saved. You're first in line. about that tuna okay? thing. Then you better treat this old funker to a letter, bud, because it ain't gonna make it to New Year's. Jake, Jake. There's nothing I can do. Jake. Jake, Jake. Don't forget the years, not to forget to write their letter. Morning, bud. Morning, Clara. Morning, bud. Clara! Clara! Bud! Don't you be late for the Christmas edition of the newspaper. Don't you talk to me about late, bud, saw you? You don't do something about that motor of yours, it will be too late. Merry Christmas. Mr. Billings, he is frantic to see you. Alex is just going to love this. Don't you think? Of course she will. I think you better get to the lair before Renfield starts chewing the furniture. Okay. George! George, come in. Come in, come in, come in. You all know George Billings, our best and brightest architect. Good morning, George. George. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, last minute Christmas shopping. George, you know about our company's relationship with Tompkins International? Of course, they're our biggest client. You know, this year it's bigger than ever. They've filled our stockings with the largest single tax shelter investment that's ever come through this office. <laughs> <laughs> George, sit down, George. Come on, sit down. We have to spend the money by the 31st. You can see we have some ideas in motion. Well, I certainly do, Mr. Redfield. 
Looking for some land, I'd say, suitable for development, along the lines of what we did in Vermont last year. Precisely. Putting money in good, low-cost, but attractive land near a small, friendly, folksy town, but with easy access to a large city. Right on the money. Something on the order of the condo complex that I've been working on, with a golf course, tennis courts, skiing, too. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Right. I am blessed with the foresight of our pioneer ancestors who, who looked to the Rocky Mountains with the knowledge that there was but one direction to travel, west. Colorado. And George Billings' latest recreational development, while it's still on the drawing board, is the answer to how Thomas Renfield is going to pull this one off and make millions for Tompkins International. And millions more for ourselves. <laughs> That'll be all for today. See the rest of George. Well, good luck, George. Thank you, Ms. Edmonds. We're counting on you, George. I'll do my best, sir. Bigger and better than your ski lodge in Vermont last year, George. I'll remember, Mr. Wiley. Okay, fine. Go get him, George. Okay. Why don't we uh, begin on my own? So what's this all about? To begin with you, George. Me? Ever since you lost your wife about a year ago, you've done nothing but throw yourself into your work. That's been my way of dealing with it. Of course, of course, of course. Now it's about a week till Christmas. It's the worst time of the year to deal with the loss of a loved one. I think you ought to take that little girl of yours and go on a vacation. To Colorado. Georgetown, Colorado. Tucked away in the hills, it's private, it's remote. Less than an hour from Denver. You want me to go there and survey the area? Two days, tops. Just like Vermont last year? Exactly the same, you go in as a tourist. So as not to make anybody suspicious and drive the real estate prices up? You walk around, take pictures, make sketches. And call you. And I'll make Georgetown a profit in our pocket by the 31st. Then Alex and I can hit the slopes. Oh, that's the spirit, George. I knew you'd see it my way. Get this Christmas behind us. I see, this is Friday. You leave Sunday. George, be a big raise waiting for you when you get back. Thanks. George, I'll be waiting for your call. Sweetheart. Hi, Helen. Hello, Mr. Billings. Sorry I'm late. I know. Quick. <laughs> These three have been cooking up a Christmas storm. <laughs> I can smell it. I can see it. Hi, ladies. Hi, Mr. Billings. Hi, Mr. Billings. Mm. <laughs> We're planning Christmas week. The whole week. We'll go ice skating at the Rockefeller Plaza. Well, there may be a little change in plans. We have to see the windows on Fifth Avenue. You and Mommy always took me to see Santa. I've already called for Chinese. Number 5, number 18, number 36. And one order of steamed rice for you. We'll talk about where we're going after dinner. Raggedy Ann says, Merry Christmas. <laughs> like I said, we have a change in plans. Daddy, I don't want to go away. Alex, please. Mr. Winfield has asked me to go to Colorado. All you would ever do for Mr. Winfield is work. He thinks it would be a good idea for us to go away together, have a Christmas vacation. I happen to agree with him. Why? Because I think it's a good idea for us to not be here this year. Now, we're leaving on Sunday. Daddy, but my friends are 
you're here. Well, you can make new friends in Colorado. And there's lots of snow. Santa's here. He's there, too. Santa Claus is like Christmas itself. In spirit and giving, he's everywhere. How will Santa know we're in Colorado? Well, you could write to him. Tell him where you are. I've told you about the small town where I grew up. Grainville, Nebraska. It's probably a lot like the small town we'll be visiting. Christmas time in, in Grainville. There was lots of snow and open spaces. Every kid in town had a sled. Every kid. On Christmas Eve, the whole town would gather at the town square. We'd hold hands, sing Christmas carols. It was wonderful. Alex, I'd give anything for both of us to have your mother back. And I'm as angry as you that we lost her. I know that I've given my life to my work this year. And I'll make that up to you. Promise. Starting with this Christmas. This Christmas, I'll have you all to myself. Georgetown? <laughs> yes, best church man and his daughter. I didn't want to miss getting my letter in. Sounds like it's important. The letter, I mean. Well, every letter today is important. <laughs> Did you write yours yet? Uh, no, not yet. Susan, you spent so much time helping others with their letters, it's time you paid attention to writing your own. I will. Your father was always first with his letter, <laughs> even before me. Sure, this isn't something you could use before Christmas. The letters to Santa Claus are secret. Hi, Scruff. How you doing, Judith? Oh, you got your letter to Santa. Good, just in time. I'm glad you stopped by. I, I wanted to tell you how sorry I am to hear about your dad losing his ranch. I'm gonna hate to see you guys go. <laughs> Listen, if there's anything I can do to help, let me know, okay? Richard, I think this is yours over here, all right? I really enjoy talking to you. Well, it was sure a pleasure for Alex and I talking with you, Joanne. Can I drop you off somewhere? The hotel in Georgetown said they were sending a cab for us. Oh. Okay, well, I want the both of you to have a very, very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. How long do we have to wait? The hotel said it was the Busy Bee Cab Company. Busy yeah, Bee? Okay.
Mr. Billings? Mr. Billings? <laughs> I'm Bud Sawyer. Busy B Cap Company, Georgetown. This must be your daughter. Alex. Alex, pleased to meet you. Now, if you'd just step this way. Wherever I go, Mr. Billings, I like to bring Christmas with me. So I see. Been doing it for 40 years. New York City. Yep. Well, never been there myself. Too many people out here. Not enough trees. Reckon they have lots of cabs in New York City, though. Not like this. <laughs> well, I had mine for 40 years. <laughs> Some people say too long. I say not enough. Christmas is our most important day of the year, beginning with our letters to Santa. Tonight we light the town tree. Tonight we celebrate the legend. What legend? Oh, 100 years old this year. You'll find out about it tonight. Back inside, Alex. Off New York right away, bud. Come on, Alex. Susan, take care of your letters as soon as she can. All right. Mm -hmm. The hotel? Right down there at the end of the street. All right. Thanks, mm -hmm. bud. Hi, Santa. <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. She, she just, she just went early. Uh... Oh, Mr. Sawyer's taxi cab. It stopped. It won't move. I don't doubt it. There we go. Come on, Tony. Hey, Hank. She got it. Keep it going. Almost there. Here we go. Merry Christmas. Thanks. Hi, Aaron. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Can I help you? You know, you certainly can. I was very glad to find you open on a Sunday. I've got to get this to New York just as quickly as possible. Oh, gosh, I'm awfully sorry, but um, I'm afraid you're going to have to come back tomorrow. I beg your pardon? Oh, I'm afraid you'll have to come back tomorrow. Have you got your letter ready for Santa yet? Not yet. Better hurry, there's not much time left. Uh, hold on. This is a U.S. post office. Yes, it is. You're home for business? Every year on letter day. This is a letter. <laughs> yes, but it is not a letter to Santa Claus. I, I, I must be missing something. This is a U.S. federal post office, and you're open for business accepting mail. Yeah, but only letters to Santa Claus. Because it's letter day. That's right. Um, now, if, if you don't mind, there are some people... I suppose children. the next thing you're going to tell me is this letter day of yours is a national holiday. Well, yes, it is our holiday. I have a letter that I want to mail. But it is not to Santa Claus. Next, do you mind? Please, Well, next. as a matter of fact, I do mind. Excuse me. I'm still at the head of this line. Not for long. Look, if this letter is so important to you, I strongly suggest you march over there to that mail slot and deposit it. It will be picked up tomorrow and delivered to New York City on its own sweet time. This is Sunday. This is letter day, and we are not open to anyone like you. Finally. Okay, so here you go, Miss McMillan. There you go. Hi, Matthew. That looks pretty good, Howard. And your wings are straight. Huh. Oh, 
You must be Mr. Billings of New York City. Welcome to Georgetown. Thank you. Well, this is my daughter, Alex. Well, I'm very glad to meet you. I'm Mr. Sawyer's sister. Together, we own the hotel. Miss Sawyer, may oh, we... Oh, please. Everybody calls me Henny. I already told them about lighting the tree tonight. Oh, can Daddy and I help you with your tree? Provided you've written your letter to Santa Claus. I'll do that right now. All right. <laughs> Just a minute. Upstairs, room 210. Follow me. And tomorrow I'll pick you up in a shepherd's robe. We won't be here for Christmas. We're short on shepherds this year. All right, come on. Come on, get out of your costumes, everybody. And don't forget, we're going to practice tomorrow. Three o'clock sharp. Come on, i got to get you signed in. <laughs> you know, I get the distinct impression that just about everybody here in Georgetown believes in Santa Claus. Oh, goodness, yes, don't you, Mr. Billings? George, please. Well, George, tonight you're going to find out why we believe. I'd best get out to the kitchen. Supper's at six o'clock. Since you folks won't be staying till Christmas, Hank Huckle down at the service station said he'd be happy to take you there for it. That's very thoughtful, Bud. Thanks. Of course, if you were staying till Christmas... Your cab would have a brand new motor. <laughs> well, secrets, Alex. You'll see the tree light. I think what Bud is saying is that he's asked for a new motor from you-know-who. A very tall order. Oh, hi, Susan. Oh, Bud, I'm so sorry to hear about your cab. It's all taken care of. And Henny, can't we get Scruff back into the pageant? The boy turned me down in no uncertain terms. Orders of his father. He's here. <laughs> Who's here? A man. He's cute, too. And he's a widower. Come on. Henny. I, no, I, I insist, I insist, you two have got to meet. Susan McMillan, meet George Billings and his daughter, Alex, all the way from New York City. <laughs> uh, we've already met. I didn't know you'd been to New York City, Susan. Well, sit right down and get yourselves reacquainted. <laughs> New York City, my. It's my daughter, Alex. Hello again. I wrote my letter. Good. You make sure you get it to the post office first thing in the morning. I will. You know, I'm afraid I wasn't your most hospitable welcome to Georgetown today. I would like to apologize. There are long lines everywhere this time of year, especially in the post office, especially on letter day. Excuse me, Miss Billing. George, telephone. Excuse me. Mr. Renfield, I'll bet. Alex, you know how he is. Look, how about if I meet you two out by the tree? But Alex, why don't you go with Susan, then I'll meet you out there. Well, that's a nice idea. Susan, running the post office as you do, perhaps you know someone who can show Alex and I around Georgetown tomorrow. Yeah, I'm sure I can arrange it. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. George. George, how, how are things going out west, George? Fine, just fine, Mr. Renfield. You know, Georgetown is a picture postcard, just like you said it'd be. Well, now that you've seen it, what do you think? Well, it's, it's a little early to say, Mr. Renfield. Uh, I got the pictures you wanted, but you see, today when we arrived, it was letter day. The whole town was at the post office mailing letters to uh, Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Everyone I've met believes in Santa Claus. It, it, it has to do with some legend. Legend? Well, I'll find out more tonight when we light the tree. Tree? The town Christmas tree. Look, I'll call you tomorrow, Mr. Redfield. George, no, no. I'll call you. I want the report tomorrow, George. Tomorrow. Once again, good friends and neighbors. Uh, and a special greeting to our friends from New York. 
We are gathered to honor the memory of our forefathers and to recall the legend that has allowed Georgetown to grow and prosper. 100 years ago, while crossing the Rockies, our forefathers were caught in a blizzard. It was the week before Christmas, and they were stranded. The snow was so deep they could not go forward, and there was no way to turn back. They faced certain starvation. Then on Christmas Eve, a stranger appeared, a man with a long white beard, lost and alone in the mountains. The stranger, near starvation, asked for food. But the people, nearing starvation themselves, said they had no food to give him. One little boy took pity on the stranger. Yes, and that night, that little boy went through every wagon. He gathered up just a little bit of food, which he then took back to that stranger. The stranger, for the little boy's charity and kindness, promised to reward him a hundred times over. And then, the stranger with the long white beard disappeared forever into the mountains. And on Christmas morning, every wagon was filled up with food, warm blankets, and wonderful handmade toys for the kiddies. And there was a trail that led up to a spring in a beautiful valley. The little boy who had befriended the stranger knew who that man was. <laughs> and tonight, we gather to honor that little boy's faith and his Christmas charity. Now, as we do each and every year, let us welcome our Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, thy leaves are green forever. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, thy leaves are green Have some mail for us, do you? What is our assistant postmaster? <laughs> well, I have a letter to mail to Santa and my dad's letter to New York. Hmm. Fastest way possible, bud. Yeah, looks like I'm going to be your official tour guide this afternoon. Oh, good. Dad's waiting at the hotel. Well, no sense wasting time. Aunt Annie says don't forget pageant practice, 3 o'clock sharp. She'll be there. Oh, before I forget, my letter to Santa. It's about time. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye. Just up near the top of that hill. That's where the legend began. And as the story goes, the legend's one day going to repeat itself. No. Yeah. Well, it's just like the old man, the stranger with the long white beard. Another Christmas miracle is one day going to save the town. What kind of miracle? <laughs> the legends are very careful not to reveal their secrets, Alex. <laughs> Thanks. What kind of work do you do, George? He's an architect. You're all around, everyday architect. <laughs> Condos, shopping centers, and golf courses. Last year, a ski resort in Vermont. Oh, I see. But not here. You see, Mr. Winfield told Daddy to take a vacation. Because my mom died at Christmas last year. I'm sorry. So we thought it'd be best not to be home this Christmas. What a beautiful valley. Hmm. It belongs to Jake Richards, or at least it did. Oh, 
Whoa, girl. Whoa, now. So you're really going to do it? Well, uh... What other choice did I have, Susan? Uh, George Billings uh, and his daughter, Alex. This is Bob Truesdale, our mayor and banker. Hi. How do you do? Nice to meet you both. I saw you at the tree ceremony last night. Welcome to Georgetown. How soon will Jake and the kids have to move? As soon as the bank finds a buyer, Susan. So, what brings you and your daughter to Georgetown, Mr. Billings? Vacation, mostly. Well, if there's anything any of us can do to make your stay more pleasant, just let us know. Come on, girl. Well, here we go. Three cups of hot chocolate. Thank you. One for you. Thank you. You're welcome. And one for you. Thank you. You're welcome. All yours? Yeah. I even managed to sell a few to the summer visitors. Now you really have quite an eye for the landscape. <sighs> I think it happens when you're born and raised here. Have you lived here all your life? Just about. I did live in Denver for about 10 years. What brought you home? My dad died about two years ago. I came home to close and sell the house. And you never went back? Actually, I did go back. And I realized I just couldn't live that life anymore. So I came back to Georgetown. The house hadn't sold. And my father had been the postmaster. They offered me his job. So here I am. At home and in love with the unspoiled land. Yeah, as long as we can keep it that way. You mean as long as you can keep the banks from selling it? <laughs> Your business, according to Alex, is change. Not mine. Grainville, Nebraska, where I come from, is not on a map anymore because it wouldn't change. That's your town. Look, some people wanted to build a shopping center midway between Grainville and four other communities, and now my town is history. Yes, but that is your history. Uh, can we go on another sleigh ride? <laughs> well, I think that's up to your father. Well, I'm, I'm sure we'd love to, if, if there's time. You're the one on the clock. Come on, Alex. It's time for pageant practice. Thanks for today, Sid. Well, you're welcome. Listen, you get your daddy to say the word, you can have another sleigh ride any time. Oh, thanks. The hot chocolate was terrific. Well, I'm glad you liked it. We promised to eat here we wouldn't be late. Uh, thanks for showing us around. You're welcome. I hear there's a dance in town tonight. Yeah, I, that's what I hear. I hope, hope I see you there. And in that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Go on, Bover. We only have two more days, dear. Now go on, you can do it. Go on. For behold, I bring you good news. For behold, I bring you news. Good news. Good. <laughs> all right, children, that's all for today. Now, quietly, please, quietly. Remember, you're in church. Yeah. Wait, wait, me. Oh. I too. <laughs> yeah, wait. Okay, let's go. Oh, Alec. Yes, Aunt Annie. Thank you for helping Grover. Oh. I was an angel once in nursery school. Well, poor Grover. You know, he's so anxious to get his angel wings. <laughs> But he's going to need a little more help, I think. He'll remember his lines. Bye, Aunt Annie.
get Alex's present out by Air Express to Georgetown tonight, Mr. Billings. And a Merry Christmas to you. I'll transfer you to Mr. Renfield. George, we've been waiting for your call. Uh, Mr. Renfield, I've done everything you asked me to do. Let's have your report. Well, Georgetown is uh, everything and, and more of what you said it would be. On the countryside, it couldn't be more beautiful if, if you painted it. I, I've, done the preliminary, I've done the preliminary sketches for the potential of a large parcel of land that the bank is foreclosing on. That's it! You've given me a great starting point. Well, Mr. Renfield, I'm not finished. There are other towns, Mr. Renfield. I want Georgetown. I want you to leave this town alone. I'll have Georgetown. I said there are other towns. George, come off it. All these legends and Santa Claus are getting to you. Maybe Christmas, but I'm not giving away Georgetown. In fact, I'm putting it under my tree. George, I want you to call a town meeting for tomorrow night. Mr. Renfield, I'm an architect. It is my professional opinion. I didn't ask your opinion. I want you to set a meeting with the town for tomorrow night. It is my recommendation that you leave Georgetown the way it is. That's for me to decide, George. Your job's done there. Get out of town. Take a vacation. so friendly. Oh, we're not always on such good behavior. We've got our petty disagreements and real disappointments. Nobody wanted to see Jake Richards lose that ranch. You know, sometimes when I look at Bud's old cab or I hear it sputter and clatter down the street, I think of this place, our town. My town. 
that which is old and good, that in which things perhaps will go on forever. You know, a bunch of us are hoping to uh, rebuild the grammar school, turn it into a summer theater. A theater? Yeah. I've never designed a theater. It might be fun. I guess a lot of fellows would have liked you to stay in Denver. Well, there were some. Several. Not a single one followed you up here. <laughs> no, not a one. You sorry about that? Sometimes. I suppose if the right fella came along, you might follow him somewhere else, huh? Well, he hasn't come along yet. Back in Grainville, a fella walked a girl home. The whole town knew she was something special. <laughs> I remember him, George Billings. He always wanted to be an architect. Moved away to New York City. Of course, in Grainville, if a girl let a fellow walk her home, he was special too. magic and walking a girl home. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Miss McMillan. You know, it takes two to make magic. Good night, Mr. Bowings. like I was a little kid again, celebrating an old-fashioned Christmas, the kind I never dreamed I'd have again. Are we staying here for Christmas? Well, if that meets with your approval. Will Santa know we're staying? Now, you did write him a letter and tell him where we <laughs> were, didn't you? True. Did Susan ask you to stay, too? Susan said that she thought you'd like to stay. Susan likes you. You think so, huh? <laughs> I do. A lot. I think. Not as much as I like you. Good night, darling. Daddy. Hmm? Could you ever be in love again? I don't know. I didn't think it could happen again Just two old set in my ways I was convinced I could always be lonely All of the rest of my days Maybe I gave up on romance In my longing to give up the pain I just didn't believe if I would ever run I was like one who had shut myself in Closed the windows, locked all the doors Afraid of the dark and the beat of my heart Yet knowing there had to be more Though it sounds like a great contradiction it's the easiest thing to explain You see, I was afraid I might never love again What does it take for a blind man to see When there's more there than 
just meets the eye What are the ways that the magic comes in That can turn a song into a sigh Sometimes I think that I'm dreaming Maybe I am going insane Maybe it's just that I'm falling in love again Get on. I've never been on a horse before. <laughs> Just grab my hand and swing up. Where will we go? I'll tell you when we get there. I told them, Denver fellas, I don't care if you have to get it here by reindeer, we have to have it by Christmas Eve. <laughs> howdy. 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 I also told them as mayor of Georgetown, this is a civic emergency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You see, every Christmas, Bud Sawyer asked Santa for socks or candy. Well, this year, we're certain he's asked for a new motor for that cab of his. And you guys ain't to be sure that Santa delivers. And on time. It sounds to me like Santa's got quite a few helpers around here. Anything I can help you with? Well, yeah, I'd like to uh, borrow or rent a car. What for? Well, I'd like to go out to the Richard train. All right, I'm, I just happen to be going out that way. You're welcome to come along. Thanks. So, you work for Renfield. How did you know? I told Hank and the boys. I, uh, I talked to your boss on the phone this morning. He's a pretty persuasive man. So he's buying the Richards Ranch. Well, isn't that why you came out to Georgetown, Mr. Billings? I think you better call me Bob. Looks like we're going to be in business together. Doesn't it? Where is this place? The 
This is my hideout. No one knows about it. It used to be an old miner's cabin. Down over there. That's where the legend comes from. How'd you know that? Susan, such a daddy and I down there. In a sleigh. You like her? Oh, I do. So does my dad. She's okay, I guess. Makes a big deal out of letters to Santa. You know what? So they are, too. Just letters. I wrote him one. Didn't you? Sure. A lot of good that'll do me. I believe in Santa. What for? Because it's part of the spirit of Christmas and giving. Come here for a minute. It's a hawk. It's my favorite. You take it. But it's your favorite. I got plenty more. But you won't be coming here anymore. I'll find other hideouts. If I lived here, I'd have a hideout too. He works for the man who bought it from back east. Figures. Him and his guy ain't gonna change this valley for good. Well, that's what his boss said. Yeah, they're gonna build uh, condominiums and ski lodges, tennis courts, like that. Well, I'm just as glad I won't be around to see it. Jake. Uh, Jake. I'm gonna have to put the soul sign up. I'm sorry. I had no idea my boss bought this place. If he hadn't bought it, somebody else would have. Listen, I came here to ask you to come to a town meeting tonight. I'd like to help you fight this thing. You're wasting your time, mister. Besides, I wouldn't come to your meeting. I'm just glad to be out of my misery. You worked your whole life to own this land. It only took me two years to go belly up. That makes me one of the lucky ones. You ask the banker, he'll tell you. There's others. All over this country, been in the land all their lives. Just like their grandfathers and their great-grandfathers before them. Hell, man. I'm only losing land. They're losing family. This is very good. 
How old is he? Eleven. Twelve next month. You two learned a lot about each other, didn't you? Yep. Let's talk about your Christmas. How can Grover's dad take away the ranch? It's the law, Alex. But Scruff loves his ranch. The law is the law. If we didn't make the payments on our apartment in New York City, they'd do the same thing to us. We'd be out on the street. Listen, now, tomorrow's Christmas Eve, and, and I need to know a lot more about your Christmas list. Oh, I did ask Santa for what I've always wanted, a dollhouse. But I've changed my mind. Changed your mind? Why? Scruff. But what's Scruff got to do with Christmas? Everything. I want Scruff and his family to keep their ranch. That's the very best present Santa could give me. That's a pretty tall order. Mr. Renfield, you cannot buy this town, not these people. Why, because you say they believe in Santa Claus? Well, yes, in, in part. I never knew you were such a sentimentalist, George. Sounds like you believe it, too. Everybody, everybody. Hank, Tim, please. As mayor of Georgetown, I would like to introduce you to Thomas A. Renfield from New York City, who's going to speak to us tonight about the future of our town. Mr. Renfield. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mayor Truesdale. Good citizens of Georgetown, Colorado. I've been reading in the Clear Creek Current about the miracle of Christmas Eve. Now, as foreshadowed in that, that long ago, a new miracle has come to bring a new prosperity to Georgetown. Bringing with it a, a fresh new future, one of, of hope, happiness, and ringing cash registers. What Mr. Renfield is really saying what is that... What I'm really saying is that George came out here and couldn't wait to call me with the good news. The countryside couldn't be more beautiful if you painted it, he said. Now, you're twisting the truth. Then got very excited when he told me about a beautiful, magnificent ranch just outside your town that was being foreclosed. Well, I, I couldn't wait to get on the phone with your banker, Mayor Truesdale. So now, because of my friend and business associate, George Billings, the paperwork has been set in motion for the Renfield Development Corporation to become the new miracle of Georgetown. And here is the check to prove it. Just what kind of miracle do you and Mr. Billings expect to bring to Georgetown? Prosperity. Prosperity and lots of it. I'm too excited. I want to show him this thing. Come on. I have such faith in this project. If any of you have any doubts, I'll, I'll be willing to buy your establishments at a fair market value. Keeping in mind that I could build my own town. I don't know. And what if we're not interested in selling? What's your name? My name is Susan McMillan. Well, Susan, are you speaking for yourself or for these good people? Well, I'm Bud Sawyer. Bud's Bisbee Cap Company. I have a question. Yes, Bud. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Oh, but I'm sure there are many here tonight who believe that Santa Claus exists. I'm not here to take that away from you. But I am here to show you the miracle of your future. and the miracle of Georgetown have only to do with charity and giving, not with, with negotiations and fine, fine, fine. Henrietta's 
Sawyer. Uh, Bud Sawyer is my brother. I have my health. And I live very well in my old age, Mr. Renfield. I can't think of anything else I need. Old age needs security, Miss Sawyer. And the more people I can bring into your hotel, the more secure. If you want to keep your hotel, Aunt Henny, you've got to keep this man out of Georgetown. George, I'm only here because of you. Sir, uh, my name is Tim. I'm the town barber. You brought this man I've here. here all my Susan. Life. You brought I Alex here on a vacation? The only thing you ever intended was to steal our land. About, What's that model got to do with us? Who thought that dumb thing up anyway? You lied to me. Alex, that's not true. I never wanted him to come here. You've got to believe me. Ask yourselves one question. If you do not change, 100 years from now, hmm. will there still be a Georgetown? Georgetown. Our first condominium units and patio homes will be opening in six months. So from now on, you've got a new friendly neighbor just up the road. Me. Merry Christmas. You didn't mean to hurt us, I know that. Didn't work out that way, though, but... What counts is that you believe. Now, just because of what happened here tonight, don't you stop believing. I just sold your town out, Aunt Annie. Oh! You're fired. We were coming here just for us. He promised me Christmas, not work. I want my mommy back. <laughs> Alex? No. No. I can explain this. I think your Mr. Renfield did all the explaining we need. Is Alex here? No. Isn't she at the hotel? No, she didn't go back. Well, maybe she's at the Truesdale. Some of those kids are in the past. I don't her. think she would do that without telling me. Yeah, you're right. Let me get my coat. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks. I've called every child in this town who knows her. No one has seen her. I just don't understand how she could be lost in Georgetown. <laughs> Unless she's hiding. You're starting to run pretty good out there. Wait a second. That's it. Uh, uh, a hideout. Who, who, who's that kid, uh, uh, Scruff? Scruff Richards. Come on. I'll put a call to the sheriff. Away. 
I think Scruff can help me. Scruff? Well, she said something about a hideout. Now, I know that Scruff can help. Scruff, what do you know about a hideout? If she's there, I know I can find her. I'm going to tell you how bad. They can't locate an engine for Bud's car. I don't believe it. You're going to believe it. We called as far as Detroit. They can't find an engine that old. Am I lying, Tim? No, no. This isn't bad news. This is the worst. You better believe it. I don't know what to do. see Bud downstairs. It was the morning before Christmas and all through the house. He just can't stand this waiting. <laughs> does Bud really believe in Santa? Of course he does. And do you believe in Santa Claus, Aunt Henny? Well, there have been times when I thought I heard the crack of that whip and the jingle of those bells. I'd hate to lose that. Hi, you scruff. I don't know if you know it, pal. You're the town hero today. You sure are. Come on in, Scruff. The doctor said I was very lucky. I just came to say goodbye. Where will you go? My mom's waitress here in the next town to help pay some bills. Probably go get her and go down the road from there. I asked Santa to let you keep your ranch. So did I. I put it in my letter, too. And Dad, sorry I ever told his boss about Georgetown. He got fired because of it. I think I'll be going now. We both lived here. We could be best friends. I could learn to ride a horse. Bye, Hugs. You take care. You too.
me again. Come on in. Thanks. Coffee's hot. Look, Susan, I... You're gonna think I'm crazy. I came here needing a new start for Alex and myself. I found a lot more than I expected. You can say that again. No, I, I don't mean about my work for Renfield. Look, this is a town where people care about each other, where they're willing to help each other out. Listen, what I'm trying to say is, I'd like to find a way for Jake and his family to be able to keep their ranch. How? Oh, I don't know. But I do know that a year from now, Renfield will have this town surrounded. And if you don't sell out or start doing things his way, this place will end up just exactly like Grainville. We have never been a town that had to fight for our existence. We're friends and neighbors living here most of us all our lives, trusting and believing. In legends and miracles. Yes, in legends and miracles. Well, they're not going to help us now. Now, I've got to stop this man. I've got to. And I'm going to tonight. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. To all the people. Which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swelling clothes, lying in a manger. Let us go over to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened, that the Lord has made known to us. Where is he who has been born, King of the Jews? We have seen a star in the east and have come to worship him. Tonight, I've, I've had a request, a request from George Billings that he be allowed to speak to you. In fact, I think so much of what George Billings is about to say, I'm giving over my time this Christmas Eve to let you hear it. George? Thank you, Reverend Ellsworth. For those of you whom I haven't met, my name is George Billings. My daughter and I have been part of your town for only a few days. I wanted to speak to you tonight 
as someone who has lost something more than once. A year ago this Christmas, my wife died. Last night I lost my job. I almost lost my little girl. I once had a hometown too. It's a lot like your town. I went away, left, and when I returned, it was gone, deserted, a victim of, of Renfield's kind of progress. If Mr. Renfield moves in here, you're all going to lose. Everything that Georgetown stands for, trusts and, and believes in will be gone. Now, I know some of you think that I'm to blame for all this happening in the first place. And I am at fault. I didn't come here as a tourist, bringing my daughter for a little vacation. I came to see what the pickings were. But then I started meeting the people of Georgetown, Aunt Henny, Bud, Hank and Clara, Mayor Truesdale, a young woman named Susan McMillan, a fellow named Jake Richards. A hundred years of blessings have come and gone. And now Georgetown faces the kind of change that could destroy forever the way of life that you cherish. You've prided yourselves on making your lives a living example of Christmas 365 days a year. Are you going to give that up? I see Bob Truesdale there. I know he'd love to find a way to not have to sell the Richards Ranch. I'm saying that Jake Richards is a neighbor and a friend. Last night in the snow, he and his son saved my daughter's life. Now there's got to be a way to help Jake and his family. And at the same time say no to Renfield Development Corporation. Tonight we have the chance to be like that small boy a century ago who found food enough to help a stranger. Now there's a way to help Jake and his family. If each of you were to go to Bob Truesdale at his bank and tell him that you'll put up your home and your business as collateral to pay off what Jake owes, you can give the Richards family not just a second mortgage, but a second life. And I'm not asking any of you anything more than I'm asking myself. I've got some savings. And I'll give everything that I can to be sure that Jake and his family get that second chance. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Well, as uh, soon as it starts running again, I'll put up the Bisbee Cap Company. And the hotel. And the Hawker Service Station in Grove Street. Oh, is that okay, Claire? Of course. And the newspaper. You can have the barber shop. And my house. And the bank. Traditionally, we all go outside, light a candle, and gather at the tree for a final hymn. Tonight, I propose we go to the Richards home, light a candle, and wish our neighbors a Merry Christmas and the happiest of New Year's. Mr. Uh, Rental. Christmas. Sure. I was only kidding when I fired you. Well, I'm not kidding. I may just stick around here. Goodbye, Mr. Renfield.
Jake, Scrub, Judith, your neighbors are here with a very special gift for you this Christmas Eve. The people of Georgetown want you and your family to stay, Jake. As of this Christmas Eve, everything you owed at the bank has been paid off. That's these people's gift to you. I don't know what to say. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child. your letter in just in time. Santa gave me twice what I wanted. I love you. I love you. Merry Christmas, Aunt Henny. Merry Christmas, George. Oh, oh, oh. Would you look at this? Look, My flowers. Flowers in the vase? Look. Ask for a new coat. <laughs> new shoes. <laughs> well, as usual, I think I own more ties than anyone else in town. I got to see you. Supply a big room. <laughs> hey, fellas, can you hear it? It's just what I asked for. See you later, fellas. Don't look at me. I, I didn't have anything to do with it. Not me. Me neither. Well, I guess I know what you asked Santa for for Christmas. <laughs> no complaints. <laughs> I gave him the cap and the new glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you and Alex are ready to check out Busy Bee Cap Company, that's your service. <laughs> I believe I promised somebody another sleigh ride. Oh, boy! Oh, thank mm. you. Merry Christmas, Alex. Merry Christmas. You're welcome to come along, too. Well, Bud, I appreciate the offer for that ride. Maybe Alex and I'll stay for a while. I knew it all the time. Oh, it's a long way from the big city. But it's a little bit closer to home. Right. Uh -huh. 